so I just start with a very sort of warm welcome and thank you from like on behalf of the Talent Tab for all our panelists and attendees for being here. Um, I just give like an introduction to myself because um, I'm probably not like one of the Talent Tab faces that you're used to sort of seeing um, run these webinars. So I'm Natalia um, and I'm actually a Talent Tab student. Um, so I have been with the Talent Tab since year 12 um, and I'm now in my second year studying law at UCL. Um, and through the Talent Tap, I've sort of done work experience with both Bevan Britton and Latham Watkins. So I did the Bevan Britton vacation scheme last summer, uh, and I've actually just signed um, my offer to do the um, Latham Watkins um, summer vacation scheme this year, um, which is really exciting. Um, and just a sort of like, um, which is really exciting. But I think it might be nice to sort of start with a general sort of introduction um to the panelists so if I could like ask you to do like a little one-to-one -one introduction of your sort of background and um, what you do now and how that sort of pit fits into like the wider picture of your organization um so maybe if we start with Beth hi yeah so I'm Beth I'm a solicitor working at Bevan Britain um so I grew up in Northampton I went to a state school there and I went to then study history at the University of Bristol um, I didn't decide I wanted to do law until after university, so then I then went to do the graduate diploma in law and the LPC, and I did a training contract at Bevan Britain, um, and so I qualified in September 2022, so I'm quite newly qualified. Um, Bevan Britain do a wide variety of work, but we have a particular specialism in the public sector, and I'm currently working in the healthcare and regulatory team. So my team works with clients in the health and social care sector, so that includes kind of NHS trusts, local authorities, private providers, and we give them advice on a whole range of legal issues, including kind of inquests into deaths, mental health law, mental capacity law, human rights act issues, and also regulations and um, the CQC, which is the regulator of health and social care organisations. So yeah, it's a big variety and I find it really interesting. Maybe if Annie, if you would like to go next. Hi, yeah, so uh, I work at Bevan Britain, uh with Beth um I have been at Bevan Britain for about four and a half years um and I am a solicitor apprentice um so before I joined the uh, before I joined the firm I had a completely different background so I I used to be in the military for about about a decade and um through that role I was a musician in the military and I did a degree in professional music studies um, whilst I was at school, I had thought about doing law, but no one in my family had um, been to university. So it wasn't really something that was, it wasn't discouraged, but it wasn't top of the list um, of things to of things to do. So um, I actually, ended, so I ended up joining up. And then coming out of that, I wanted it a career. So I wanted to go into something with training. And Obviously, having thought about law when I was at school, I looked into the options for that. Uh, I wasn't in a position to go to, back to university. I needed to work because I had needed to pay for somewhere to live. So that's why um, I knew that the SQE route and the apprenticeships were potentially coming down the line. So I started working at the firm as a paralegal, did some qualifications through Silex, uh, saw what it was all about. And, um, and here I am. So I'm just about a year off now. Um, qualifying. I've got my SQE exams this year. Mostly work on um, infrastructure projects, so work either for the NHS or local authorities or for private sector entities on projects for for the public sector. So most of the work I do is commercial contracts. Brilliant. Thank you, Esme. If you'd like to move go next, I'm Esme. I'm a second C trainee at Latham. Uh, my first seat was corporate, and I'm now in the banking team. Um, I grew up in London, on the outskirts of London. I also went to a state school and I went to the University of Manchester to study law. Um, and yeah, a bit about how my role as a trainee at this point fits into the wider team. Um, I just support the deal teams on like really high value financings and incorporate some really interesting M&A deals. Um, so hopefully you can share some of that wisdom with you and I also did a back scheme at Latham a winter back scheme in 2019 which was in person so hopefully you can impart some wisdom on the assessment process as well. Great thank you and then Fadzai please. Hi everyone so I'm Fadzai I'm also a trainee solicitor at Latham 
Um, I'm currently in my second seat. Me and Esme started the training contract together. Um, I'm sat in the derivatives department at the moment and before derivatives, I was in the banking department. Um, before joining Latham, I, well, I studied at the school in Slough and then I went to the University of Birmingham and I did a law degree and then I did the LPC. I also did a vacation scheme with Latham, but it was like a virtual scheme. So I'm not sure how relevant that is anymore. But yeah, I still would be able to give you know some advice on like the process as well. So yeah. Great, thank you. I think it's nice to see that there's like so many different people here on the panel today. So hopefully we'll be able to cover like a lot of ground, a lot of questions. Um, but I think maybe a good place to start is I think Beth, you gave like a, a sort of brief introduction into Beth and Britain, but I think it might be useful to note that I think Latham Watkins is a very different kind of firm to Beth, Beth and Britain. So I think maybe Esme or Fadza, if you want to talk a little bit about sort of obviously like Latham is a US firm. So what, what makes that kind of different to a UK firm in that sense? Um, yeah, I mean, well, we're a US heritage firm. So, I mean, our London office has got uh, like we're 500 lawyers strong here. Um, we're about 3000 globally. So whilst we're US heritage, we'd, we definitely would consider ourselves, a, you know, a global firm. Um, we've got 30 offices across the world and, there hasn't been a day where I don't interact with one of those offices. So um, it's quite nice to be somewhere that doesn't feel, you know, that it's uh, your classic US firm, as people would say, or, you know, it's perhaps different to what people consider a magic circle firm. I think it's very, yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite diverse just in, in regions and people. Um, yeah, and in, and in terms of the work, obviously, like the bread and butter of the firm is our corporate banking and, and also litigation practice. And we have some really, really good specialist teams um, that work on some more niche areas that will fit within, you know, that all assist with the corporate banking teams deals as well. And do you think, like, I think it's quite easy for students, like, Googling firms, I suppose, especially US heritage firms, like you say, there's quite a lot of stigma surrounding working sort of at a US heritage firm in terms of like hours or in terms of like client expectations. How do you think, do you find that it lives up to that kind of stigma? And do you think that actually it is quite different? I don't mind taking this as well. You can add anything um, afterwards, but I think it is very different from what I expected because before joining Latham, I also like had heard of these like stereotypes about US firms and it's actually very different so in terms of like the culture the people are genuinely very nice the clients that you deal with like I've not had a bad experience with the clients so far um they're very respectful in the way that you know you'd just expect and also in terms of the hours I think hours are more dependent on what department you're in and I think that'll be the same at like every firm basically so there are some departments that are busier at certain times you know because of like what maybe ha happening in like the market and the economy and some departments that may be quieter so I think you know there are you know you do work long hours sometimes but it's not like constantly and it's also just yeah it's more department specific I think from my experience anyways. Yeah great thank you and I suppose maybe an open question to everybody in terms of like for students looking to get work experience or sort of I think it's important to remember that as much as like law firms want to recruit you you're kind of looking for a place that you want to work as well do you have sort of any advice as to like looking at law firms or sort of what were the kind of key points for you when it came to choosing where you want to train or do your sort of um, placements Hi, yeah. So for me, it's just having to think about what kind of law firm would suit you. So I knew that I didn't really want to be a big kind of large international firm. And I wanted something that, that was big, but had a slightly smaller feel and kind of did work, which I had a kind of interest in. So I worked in hospital um, for a while after university and I found that all that really interesting. So I was looking at firms that had kind of specialisms within that sort of area. Um, so yeah, it's definitely about having a research and having a think about what kind of size of firm you'd think would suit you and then also what kind of work you'd be interested in doing. Great, thank you. I don't know if anyone has. Oh, Annie. I think yeah, I was just, yeah, I was just going to say, um, I found it really tricky because I didn't know any, 
anybody really I had actually had a friend of a friend who was a partner a firm in Bristol but I knew I knew that I didn't want to go to London I knew that I um didn't want to do crazy crazy hours all the time um I think if it was 10 years before then maybe I'd have given that a go but <laughs> I wasn't um wasn't looking for that so then yeah I was I, I really started just looking at regional firms but um what I would say is um it is tricky and if people feel feel that it's all a bit daunting and they don't know where to start then I think there there are a lot of people in that position and um yeah just put your feelers out and and try try and find out as much of it information as you can yeah definitely I think I found that I definitely like you get kind of a bit of a feel for like what feels right what where you want kind of belong almost when you start looking and, and researching and things like that but um maybe I suppose so once you sort of decide like the kind of law firms you want to apply to and things like that, it's quite a long application process to sort of get into law. So I was wondering maybe like Esme or Fadzai as sort of trainees, if you'd be able to tell like some of the students about the sort of application process and whether you have any kind of tips as to completing applications and things like that. Yeah, sure. So um, I did my vaccine in 2019, as I mentioned. So I think it's, it's slightly different now. I think the online application is same as it was before so that's kind of why law why you that's the first step of the application so it's a really good opportunity to you know talk about your work experience and why you're interested in the profession and you know also things outside of the profession that that make you quite unique um and then I think as part of that there's an online assessment so there's a kind of simulated pro bono exercise which is based on um, a real life matter and then there's also kind of behavior behavioral test which just kind of uh, assesses your approach to work and things like that and then the second stage is a video interview which is 15 minutes and it's pre-recorded so there'll be a set of I think it's five questions um, again sort of along the lines of why why Latham, why law, why a particular area interests you um, and how you can demonstrate that. And if you're successful from both of those, you'll go on to assessment centre. So I think with the VAC scheme, it's um, an interview, a written exercise and then a presentation all in a day. Like it is, it is quite a long day. And then the TC is just the interview and presentation. Uh, so it, it is a long process and there is a lot of work that goes on um, behind the scenes, like obviously everyone in assessment period will know what it's like applying to different firms. And I'm sure Beth and Annie can add some on you know, the apprenticeship route. But um, tips I have for, well, what, what, I, what I found really useful when I was applying was to just talk about things that actually genuinely interested me. I think I did get caught out a couple of times in really early on in application stages where I would talk about things on my um, application or, um, you know, just, just in mock interviews about deals or things that I, one, didn't really know anything about and two, had no interest in, but I thought that that's what they might want to see. And I think it just really comes across that way. Um, and, and you can tell, and also, I just didn't know what I was talking about so I think when I made the decision to actually figure out as Beth said like what sort of work might interest me I went from there and I think that helped my application um, and another thing I would say is like know know your why so you know you don't want you don't want to be in a situation where you've got all these really brilliant answers on your um, written application and then at interview, you, you can't really pull that across why, why the firm. You know, you, you come up with a almost speech of why law or like why law firms, but you fail to kind of drill that down into Latham in particular, for example. So I think know your why and also just be authentic and, and honest about what really interests you. I think that's a good combination. I just wanted to add to that. When you're making your applications, whether it's like the, the actual written application or you're in an interview, um, you don't like you, sh you shouldn't only talk about like legal experience. And you don't have to have only legal experience. Like you could have you could have worked in Tesco. You could have worked in a bar like I, I worked at Weatherspoons before, <clears throat> like whilst I was in uni. And I mentioned that on my application. And it's 
like it's something that I spoke about at the interview stage as well because there are transferable skills that you get from you know being a bartender that you could apply to you know life as a trainee solicitor so like being able to work under pressure you know being able to like manage customers is like you know as a trainee you have to be able to also like manage clients and just kind of stay on top of things so yeah just you know whatever experience you have just try to think about what that experience has taught you and maybe how it like kind of relates to a legal career yeah thank you I think the point as may you made about the sort of making sure what you say on your application is true definitely definitely was true to me because I, I just did my sort of back scheme interview and I think both for the Lane Watkins and the Bevan Britain one I think I had on my application that I was like did some theatre and they sort of asked me like what's your favourite play or tell me more about this so like you will get asked on sort of the little things that you don't perhaps think you'll get picked up on um but I think talking about kind of like transferring perhaps non-legal or like non-legal work experience I think Beth you did your original degree in history so how do you think that sort of perhaps helped you in your career on law and what do you think were the benefits of perhaps doing a non-law degree and then going into law? Yeah thank you so see so yeah, I did history at uh, University of Bristol and I had no idea what I wanted to study um, what I wanted to do as a career when I was 18 so I thought I do something I enjoy but something that's also going to get me some like good solid skills and so with history you've got all the transferable skills there you've got kind of the the like focus reading analysis writing um things like that um so yeah I think it's with if you do do a law degree it's if you know you're interested in law um it is kind of it makes sense to do a law degree but if you if you're not quite sure that's also okay and there's still kind of roots in um and there are there are benefits to having kind of insight into different areas um so yeah I think that was a good good path for me great thank you and Annie would you be able to talk more sort of about your application process or how you sort of went about finding like the solicitor apprentice route and perhaps like the benefits of doing that instead of perhaps doing a degree when I applied um it was it was for a silex paralegal role um so completely different but now as I understand they're taking on um solicitor apprentices through University of Law and it's a six year program I think which sounds a lot but if you go to uni and do a degree and then do you know your LPC or you'll be doing SQE now and then um training contract you're much of a muchness time wise um I think one of the benefits of doing an apprenticeship is getting the work experience as you go rather than front loading all your education and then realizing oh, I don't actually like the job. So I think that's one, one benefit of it. And also people are different situations, can't always, you know, sometimes some people need to be working. So working and studying at the same time um, is a good idea. But um, just looking at the process for solicitor apprenticeships, how Be Bev and Britain are running them now, they're doing, you've got your online application, and then I think there's a video interview and then an assessment centre day, that's it. So assessment centre, and they sounds like, and I remember my assessment centre, um, it's the same kind of task that you, I just heard you talking about on the vacation scheme, um, kind of group group tasks, um, some assessments to see like your, your general approach to work, prioritisation, um, and, and an interview, in-person interview on the day. So I think that's the process at the moment um all those list of apprenticeships great thank you I think we've just had two questions come into the chat that might be quite useful to answer now we're talking about kind of applications and things so I think there's one directed to you Beth um and it's asking did you have did you find you had to work a lot harder when you started at law firm having sort of I assume non done a non-law degree um and was there a lot you didn't know because you hadn't studied law so the way I did it is I did um a history degree but then because I hadn't done a law degree it is changing now with the SQE I did the graduate diploma in law so that is basically all of the core modules of a law degree squeezed into one year um, so I did when you do then go on to do the LPC in your training contract you've got the same kind of base knowledge of people that have done law degrees but I think the benefit of doing a law degree is you do all those core modules but then you also get to do other modules that you find interesting 
so the kind of core modules you do we did on the GDL were kind of like property business things like that whereas if you do a law degree you can do things like family law or health law or banking law and you get to explore a bit more so you don't not doing a law degree you don't get the benefit of being able to explore a bit more but yeah it's still it's not really I didn't kind of feel that I had less knowledge because I then went on to do all the the kind of conversion and things yeah on that on that two things the first thing I would say I haven't been here four and a half years I've obviously seen quite a few trainees come through and um you can you can never tell who's done a law degree and who hasn't um it's not something that is really really obvious um because you do get that core knowledge by doing your conversion anyway and then on the conversion point whilst whilst the GDL as it is now is being replaced by the SQE you do you do essentially the same thing you can you can do a conversion but covering those core modules um it's just examined in a different way and maybe just for some of like the sixth form students that perhaps haven't like looked so deep into like a law career yet would you be able to tell more tell us more about like what the SQE is or so I know Annie I think you're in the process of doing your SQE exams like what that looks like yeah sure try and summarize it best I can so the the regulated bit now to become a solicitor is purely the qualifying exams not how you get there the regulated bit are those final point exams so this they've been brought in really to to increase diversity in the industry so that people can get to that point through different ways and means so there's all kinds of short courses you could do self-study to go to the extreme I mean that would be bold but you know to the extreme you could do self-study and just take the exams or there are short courses there are longer courses there are apprenticeships I think some law degrees will be incorporating the SQE1 into them um, which is your functioning legal knowledge which is the, the core topics which Beth talked about used to be covered in the GDL so um, yeah that's that's essentially what the SQE is that they're the qualifying exams list of qualifying exams uh, uh, yeah I would say so um, so there's two sets of qualifying exams. You have SQE1 and SQE2. Um, I'm going to get my notes up just so I get this right. Even though I'm taking them, there's quite a lot to it. Um, so SQE1 is, is your functioning legal knowledge, and that covers business law, dispute resolution, contract taught, the legal system of England and Wales, and constitutional and admin law. So that's one half of the first set. And then the other side is land law and property practice, wills and administration of estates, solicitors accounts, trusts and criminal law and practice. So the first thing probably to note in that is these are all covered in two sittings in an exam. So all the topics you're examined in all at the same time. So I think that's one of the thing, obviously I don't have anything to compare it to, but talking to people, that's something I think which is, um, which, some people have said it's quite different and would be quite difficult about the new exams is that it's all you have to have all that knowledge all in one go and the format of those exams is single best answer questions so they're multiple choice but not in the sense that there's one you know like on your Saturday morning tv quiz where there's one really obvious answer it's five answers it's always like a little mini case study the question five answers one is um the best answer so others could be technically right they're just not the best answer best advice to the client or um so that's the format of the first set that's your basic the, the core subjects and then FLK and um, SQE2 uh is more like aligned with the LPC I think it's the more practical skills so legal drafting legal writing legal research case matter analysis advocacy and client interviewing so those are that's 16 assessments um covering the legal obviously the legal content but more so the skills and that's the second set so there are yeah there are short courses covering each of those exams or there are apprenticeships which encompass 
as them all. Uh, I think the first results that are coming through now are, are generally saying that apprentices are doing better than other people because I think you're more kind of absorbed into it and you have more support. Yeah, thank you for that. I think it's hard to like get your head around it, like sort of like you're looking very kind of feels like you're looking quite far in advance but actually you kind of have to start thinking about things quite early in, in law I suppose um but we have another question from someone who's a first year um and maybe sort of um to Esme and Fadza I know you've done quite a variety of work experience um between you um is there any advice that you would give with regard to getting different experience and skills before applying to vacation schemes and summer internships I would probably say, um, yeah, before applying to vacation schemes, um, try to attend like, as many open days as you can. Um, some of the open days like have an application form, but the application forms are not like as long as the vacation scheme application forms. And um, they're just good to attend because you get to meet people and you get to network with people at the firm. And so you can find out like more about the firm. But you also get to find out about the firm's practices and you know just loads of information about the firm so it's a good thing to do i think it's also quite useful to um do like virtual internship schemes so there's this online platform called um i think it's farage now um and on that platform they've got like loads of different virtual internship schemes and they've got one for like latham and watkins and you get to do like work that a trainee would do if they were at least well a trainee at least my workings would do and um, it's just like a good way to get exposure into the kind of into the kind of work that trainees at the firm would do and it's something that you can speak about on your application form as well and they've got like loads of different virtual internship schemes for loads of different firms so it's like you can get quite a lot of exposure to to work that way there's also like um on linkedin like i always see like loads of different events like people always holding events on different like legal things and like law firms and like associates and just like there's loads of things on LinkedIn basically so if you go on LinkedIn I'm sure you'll find like something you can attend that will help to increase your commercial awareness as well. Add to that as well it can with work experience before vacation schemes it can be especially if you're not living in a, a big city it can be hard to find kind of work experience but even when I was in Northampton I just emailed loads and loads of kind of high street firms and then one or two came back and said, oh, yeah, like you, you feel free to come come and do a bit of shadowing um, for a few days. And th so even though it's kind of I, I didn't want to work in a high street firm, particularly, it was just any experience you can get really is really good experience. Leading on from that, um, so we can answer sort of like more like work related questions as well. So once you sort of decide you, you kind of want to do a career in law, you start kind of applying for vacation schemes and things like that. Um, so for those that I think. Beth, Esme and um, Fadza, you all did vacation schemes in different sort of places. What were your main kind of takeaways from doing vacation schemes and um, like open days and things like that? Or what advice would you give for people that are currently applying to those? I think you, so you can go for kind of training contract only applications, but if you can, it is really good to do a vacation scheme. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a two week work experience placement but then you're also being assessed for a training contract and I think it just gives you the opportunity to learn more about the firm meet people get kind of a sense of the culture and also just to get some experience of what it actually looks like to work in that sort of firm and whether it's the right fit for you and then it also allows the firm to see how you work and see how you you kind of fit in so I think it is a really good opportunity if um, you can get on a vacation scheme before you kind of look into training contracts great and maybe sort of like post that um I know Beth like you've just qualified into being a lawyer what does sort of like progression look like at a law firm like post kind of trainee level yeah so I'm I'm very newly qualified so I'm still very much a little a baby in terms of the, the law world but um yeah so for me it was a vacation scheme two-year training contract and then I stayed on at my firm and then it's what was what I did what kind of attracted me to law is that it's quite structured um and so the progression is quite structured which is which is good to see how you might progress so at our firm we kind of have solicitor then we have associate then we have senior associate and then partner and um, that's kind of the traditional law firm trajectory but then there's also opportunities in-house you can go and work for 
a company, you can go and work um, in the public sector. And so, um, yeah, I think there's kind of different different routes you can go down once you're qualified. And do you find that you get kind of a lot of responsibility in terms of um, your own progression? I know like Layden Watkins put a lot of emphasis on kind of a training contract that's very you led um, as sort of trainees um, and maybe even to Beth, like as, as an NQ, do you find that like you have a lot of control in terms of deciding your career path after you kind of choose a law firm? I think, um, so I did the four, in my training contract, I sat in four different departments, which is quite traditional for a training contract. Um, and we kind of had, they, they'd do a list of all the seats and we put our preferences. Um, so it can be disappointing sometimes if you don't get your first preference, but then it usually ends up that within one of the four, you will get kind of one of your preferences. Um, and when you, when you are a trainee, there's a lot of kind of, we did a lot of writing down what we were doing and thinking about our skills because there's the SRA has got to be monitoring you in order for you to be be signed off so there is a lot of thinking about the skills your and your progression um as an NQ it does feel slightly different because it's not as structured and I'm not having as regular kind of supervision as I was as a trainee but I think it's still yeah um thinking about skills thinking about progression um and yeah You have to be kind of you do have to be proactive so you are you are monitored and you do have someone checking and supervising you but then especially as a trainee i found if there were certain gaps in my skills and knowledge it's good to go out and reach out to solicitors and fee earners and say i'd really like some experience in this um have you got any this of this kind of work and even now as an nq i'm obviously my I'm still very, very fresh. I'm kind of thinking about different areas that I might want to try and different skills I still think um, I could work on. The more kind of you put yourself out there, the more responsibility you're given. So it is kind of in your control. And um, from my experience in banking, so in the banking team, we have like people that do different types of work um, in the general banking team. And so it's like, it's up to you if you're interested in a certain, like people will reach out to you to do like, you know certain tasks but if you're interested in a certain type of work and you know that a certain type of person does that work then you know you can reach out to that person and kind of get involved in that way so yeah you do have you know you you are kind of left to take control of your training contract definitely so it's like a, a um open question to anybody do you think there's like a, a specific type of person that you need to be or that you should try to be um to be successful in a career in law or what kind of personality traits do you think are, are useful to to have or to develop i would say inquisitive ask questions someone who asks questions and and like yeah like you said if oh, you overhear something that's one of the benefits of being in the been in, in an office i suppose but um yeah if you hear about something that the firm's doing someone in the firm writes an article about a topic and you're not in that department but you're really interested in it you know being proactive so yeah I'd say I'd say inquisitive and proactive because well it can be it can be quite a, a challenging job at times in a good way like you're always learning you're always being kind of pushed um and kind of growing but it's good to be kind of resilient and adaptable um organized um, those kind of skills are really ha really helpful and but they're skills you're always kind of building on as well and I, I agree with um, everything that's been said but I think you don't have to be like a certain type of person or come from like a certain type of background to go into law like my like our cohort it's like everyone is like everyone comes from different backgrounds with different stories so you know that should never put anyone off but yeah you just have to possess like certain characteristics like being organized and being like proactive and stuff um which will just make your life easier as well as a trainee do you find that you're quite close with your cohort like what opportunities do sort of both firms offer like beyond I suppose training like do you have social events or do you have like personal development like events and things like that yeah, so we at our firm, we have kind of um, a social committee, so they'll put on various things, kind of lunches or drinks after work, which is really nice. And we also have various other committees, which again, as a trainee, I found really, really helpful to get involved with because it means you meet kind of a, a wide variety of people at the firm. So we have kind of an environmental committee. I was in the, I'm in the community engagement committee, so we look at kind of fundraising and pro bono work. 
Um, and so, yeah, there's, it's not just work or day. There's normally kind of lots of other things to get involved with and build other skills in different areas. A of examples of that. So actually tonight in the Bristol office, we've got a locked in a room, one of the escape room um, events. So that's going on. How we're studying law at Manchester um, from Samara, who's currently considering doing, um, I assume, a law degree at Manchester. Um, I love Manchester and I I did really enjoy the course. I will be honest, first year was quite tough. I I worked for a year before I went to university. So um, it, that was a bit of an adjustment. So I think then going back into education and obviously the jump from sick form to university is big, is big as it is, but then to go from working full time for a whole year to first year um yeah it was it was it was challenging but it was useful and obviously you cover the core modules across first year and then some of second year and then in second year there's a bit more variation in terms of what you study you have a bit more choice whilst also having to do some of the core modules but third year was my favorite by far I um I picked up some really interesting modules and I think they're, they're quite unique to Manchester some of them so I did um kind of like a, a mental health law module um there's also there's also modules about like extraterrestrial life and really unique things that people can get involved in um I also did a dissertation I did criminal justice and my dissertation was on criminal justice and also involved kind of um like socio-political aspects to it as well so I kind of I've kind of got to dip out of my degree a bit so I think what Beth alluded to earlier about um you know, being able to explore within the degree. Uh, I really enjoyed that in Manchester and there were just loads of opportunities and options for everyone of all different, um, with all different interests. What do you think you would do if you weren't a lawyer? And uh, maybe for Annie or Beth, who had quite like different, I suppose, routes into law, maybe. Um. So when when I left university, so at university before university didn't know what I wanted to do. At university didn't know what I wanted to do. Left university still didn't know what I wanted to do. So don't be worried if you you're not quite sure what you want to do. Um, and I kind of looked at a variety of different um, kind of graduate schemes and different careers. And there was kind of a few that I was looking into. So kind of civil service, I was quite interested in. I even thought about social work at one point. Um, but I think the thing that eventually kind of made me decide on law is that I quite liked the structure of it um, as I said it's quite a structured career and I also liked the fact that you can qualify as a lawyer and you can then work in lots of different um, places so you don't just have to work in a law firm if if that doesn't suit you you could go and work for a charity you can go and work for a business you can go and work in ha in kind of the public sector um, and so that was I think one of the benefits of, of it as a career that drew me yeah um if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now I think something which um has cemented that I know I'm kind of at the right firm doing the right thing so I think I mentioned the project I'm I'm working projects um so I do, do a lot of infrastructure projects on hospitals schools roads prisons um from waste plants uh, anything really that serves the public sector um so how I realize I'm in the right place is the I'd love to still work on those kind of projects so sometimes I see sort of central government advisors or um yeah more kind of commercial advisors on those projects and I think I would quite happily do that role if I wasn't doing this role so um yeah I would still really like to be in kind of those those kind of projects but um if you're happy to share what was the biggest barrier you had to overcome um is there anything that you really struggled with in your journey to becoming a lawyer I don't know I think that's an open question for whoever would like to answer that one I think when I was at high school I kind of thought I might want to do law it sounded interesting but there wasn't any resources you know for me to make use of I was the only person in my year group that even had considered law and um that made it quite hard for me 
deciding whether to go to university or if so where or whether I could even do that or you know law just seemed very out of reach um and I went to a state school and I, I can't fault my school because I I you know I did, did well and it was it was it worked for me but I think the biggest barrier initially was just coming from that state school background um, it's just at the time, and I hope that it's improving now, it just wasn't the done thing. That wasn't the career, especially where I live. People tended to, you know, finish school and then they'd stay back around home. And that's great for them. But where I wanted it, something different, I didn't have the resources. So I ended up, um, you know, applying to these schemes that were available for sixth form students and I kept getting rejected. I had no one to review what I was saying and if I went back and read them now I'd probably cringe but I didn't have that guidance. I think I was quite daunted after I'd fin finished university by kind of the length of the journey so I'd done a three-year degree but then I'd then need to do kind of a one-year law conversion a one-year LPC two years as a trainee and so it does seem quite daunting but it can be broken down so I did my GD, I self funded my GDL, which was hard work because I didn't have a training contract at that point, but I kind of worked for a bit beforehand and then I had another year working afterwards and then I got a training contract and they funded my LPC. Um, and so it can seem very daunting, but there's no, that if you don't get a training contract first, first time around while you're at university, that's, that's not something to be put off by and it's kind of just have to take it in stages and just keep keep trying um and even the train train everyone gets rejected from training contract applications it's just like a a rite of passage but um the more the, the more you do the kind of the better you get the more skills you you learn so yeah i think it's just don't put too much pressure on yourself and the turn up is doing residentials in london and manchester this year um, which city is better for an inspiring lawyer or is, is is there a city that's better for an aspiring lawyer I suppose I think no there's not like a particular city I I got involved with everything I could at Manchester and yes it was facilitated by the university but there's a lot of things that are outside the university that you can get involved with and um, yeah there was no shortage of resources there it's a brilliant city and like we've got some of the best cities ever so um, I, I don't think there is a difference, obviously, that it's more saturated in London, but uh, I mean, Latham have an office up in Manchester, uh, albeit with, they, we don't have Fiona's up there, but we have different staff up there. So we have operations in Manchester. So I think that just shows kind of the reach um, and regional is, is just as good. It just depends what you are after. And some people just don't want to move to London, which is totally fair just to say a huge thank you to all of our panelists and attendees um, for being here today thank you for all your sort of advice and just answering questions and just talking about your experiences I think it's always very useful um, from an early stage to be able to hear from people that are doing the career you want to do and at the end of the day I think it just makes people seem so much more real and makes the job seem so much more attainable so thank you so so much for your time mm -hmm.